Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India this course design of fixed wing UAV. I hope all of you are safe and sound. This is again Dr. Subramanyam Sadarla from the Department of Aerospace Engineering, IIT Kanpur. So, this second part is in fact the continuation of what we have uh, covered during the lecture series 1. So, I do not consider this as a new course and indeed, and indeed it is not right. So, I, I do not want to again reintroduce the content that we are going to cover in this course. So, and in the first part we have covered about the performance aspects starting with some introductory concepts and then we have covered the performance aspects and how performance aspects help us in weight estimation and also we, we started with some aspects of stability to be frank long about we started studying about longitudinal static stability and then we reached up to a point where we can find out neutral point given a wing and tail combination. So, that is where we ended the previous course and yeah I have got many requests from your friends saying that they were not able to do the first part of this course and then they want to uh, participate in this current course. So, I would like to structure this course in such a way that uh, these newcomers will also find it comfortable. So, I will not repeat what the concepts that we have covered uh, during the first lecture series. So, I may not go into the uh, detailed derivations of those, but I will touch base all those uh, yeah during the first week of this course I will try to cover a little bit about all the concepts that will be helpful even for those who already completed the first part and also for the newcomers right. So, we will cover those concepts which will be useful in the current course in the current uh, lecture series. Yeah, uh, so I would like to say this course will cover an algorithm right. So, I would like to present a flow chart. So, algorithm of design you know, the main emphasis is uh, uh, it will this course will try to address some of the subroutines or subroutines of the design process right. So, where we develop our own codes since we all know design is an iterative process. So, instead of depending upon pen and paper repeatedly let us develop codes parallel uh, codes parallelly during the course and then use them for solving some design design problems right design subroutines. So, we are here to discuss about this so basically part 2 continuation from where we have left last time so as i mentioned in the first first one week will be dedicated for revisiting those concepts which we will be using in this course and we will again start with stability and briefly derive those expressions which we have arrived during the previous course maybe during the last week of the previous course right. We will revisit that again and solve few example problems and then proceed with our current design process ok. So, let us consider the following flow chart that is going to talk about a typical design process right. So, we will start with certain mission requirements which are a set of statements that helps you I mean set of statements that you need to achieve right with that particular UAV. So, you have mission requirements. So, from this statements we will be able to figure out at least figure out what will be the aim of this design right. So, in the sense 
you will have certain geometric constraints from mission requirement statements as well as performance constraints. So, for example, if you consider a high altitude hill, right, high altitude and long endurance UAV. So, that means you are looking at a higher endurance, uh, typically may not be a high speed UAV, right. So, you will know certain range of these velocities at which you need to fly, you will get to know. That means you, you definitely concentrate on a subsonic, lower subsonic UAV, right. So, uh, and then you know it flies at certain altitude, so you will try to figure out which kind of propulsion system that I need to use, right. And also a medium, so you will be asked, for example, if you are uh, asked to carry a payload of so, much, so many cages, then you will typically know, once you know the kind of payload, you will try to figure out what is the power requirement of the payload, right. And with that payload, for, for a UAV to lift that payload along with the other accessories, you will start with certain geometric parameters, right. So, again, mission requirements poses or corners your focus area. When you talk about hail, you will be concentrating on UAVs which can perform flight at a lower subsonic speeds, right. So, when you talk about a combat UAV, then you may be concentrating on higher subsonic or supersonic speeds. So, along with them, basically constraints the kind of aerodynamic model that you have to consider during the design process. Apart from that, these mission requirements will also give you certain geometric constraints. Right. May not be all definitely, but to some extent they will pose certain geometric constraints. So, from this mission requirements with a basic estimation of geometry, we can do a proper weight estimation, right. So, from this mission requirements, you can perform weight estimation. So, and then we can use this weight estimation and of course, this mission requirements here will also be useful again, right. So, we can use this for initial geometry or initial configuration selection. So, again this is an iterative approach, right, it has multiple steps in achieving this particular uh, configuration, a particular configuration based upon mission requirement. So, you start with geometric, like, so what you have will be constraints. So, you will try to iterate to achieve that, you know, with those constraints you will try to achieve certain, doing iterations you will be able to achieve certain geometry, maybe you can say wing plan form at least, you know, for, for the time being we can understand that way. At the same time, you will also analyze or say you will, you will, you will in fact, you know, the conf this is guided by this performance aspect as well. So, all these subroutines, so will work hand in hand, right in order to figure out a particular configuration, okay. So, let us continue this here. So, once you have this geometry, you can independently perform an empirical estimation.
so so for this what i require is a historical database as an input right so i have historical database so this geometry selection will enable me to perform certain stability and performance analysis so this particular So this analysis will help me to figure out the propulsion system or power plant selection. Right. So this performance and from this performance analysis, once we are satisfied with it. then we'll go ahead for simulation right the simulation we'll be talking about is as an aircraft flight simulation right so so for this flight simulation subroutine we need is is a numerical model right so or say what we have is the six to of equations of motion right mathematical modeling which will be used along with six to of six degrees of freedom equations of motion will use a numerical integration so this equations of motion in general result in a first order uh, differential equations right maybe linear or non linear so in order to solve them we have to use some numerical algorithm so we have to solve them simultaneously so we will use some numerical integration so for this numerical integration to happen we need to give so initial flight conditions as an input and also for this mathematical model you need to give so aerodynamic parameters as an input so for this six to of equations of motion so the input you need to provide is regarding inertial and geometric parameters 
or details you can say right so this will help us to figure out how the system behaves or the current design that you are considering how it behaves under various conditions right so if you are happy with this simulation results then you can proceed to the next part which is the prototype fabrication So, in this prototype fabrication, again you have a structural design. So, you, once you have the structural design, you may now go for a scaled down configuration, right? You, so, that is all that I will include in the structural design itself. And then these are the major steps, I am not going in detail at each and every level. So once you scale down the configuration then you may go for uh, fabrication methodology or in between, yeah, in the structural design when I say there is analysis as well, once you have come up with the design then you can use any of the existing uh, analysis softwares right? that will help you to figure out what are the structural stress as well as loads acting on this. Right. And then fabrication of fabrication, right? So this fabrication again includes the scale down prototyping and manufacturing. Okay. So I require some more space here. What I can do? I will try to reduce this one. This subroutine will talk about prototype development right, or fabrication. So, where you have structural analysis. design and analysis. And then scaling down the configuration. And then perform or carry out the manufacturing or fabrication process. So this, so at each and every level, we have iterative approach. No. Apart from, say, every, every at each and uh, like at each and every stage, we should also make a decision, right? If you are satisfied with this analysis, then you'll be going to this step, or you'll be either going to step A here, right? Where I say this. Step A, right? So once you have this, you'll go for this. Once you have the scaled down model, you'll go for wind tunnel testing. So you'll do an experimental analysis, right? So. The initial experimental or the like once you have the design, once you are satisfied with the simulation results and then you can go for the initial experimental uh, analysis using wind tunnel testing. And then you can also perform scale down flight test, right? You, you have the configuration, 
So before this, so you will do instrumentation as well. When, when you do the flight test, you will also do instrumentation here. Right. So instrumentation. So this can be like instrumented flight test as well as initial uh, flight test without any instruments, right? To see the flying capabilities. Right. So instrumentation. So this entire design approach is from flight dynamic point of view. Okay. So and then flight test. So once you are happy with this data, go for the scaled up configuration, the full scale configuration, and again go for flight test data. Where if you are not not if you are not able to accommodate a full scale configuration in the wind tunnel, then you can directly go for the flight test instrumented flight test and perform experiments, right? analyze the performance as well as uh, estimate the parameters using para existing parameter estimation techniques. Right? And, and if you find any of this, uh, if you need to change any of the parameters, say if you need to increase the damping, so you get, again revisit the stability analysis here, either without changing the configuration, can we do it by changing the CG? Right, so in a way you can shift the loads, rearrange the loads, and uh, achieve the different CG location, and tr and see the simulated response of it, and then you can proceed with the structural design, see if there is any uh, change in the stresses that are, that are acting at the joints, or the C change in CG location is it changing the uh, is it changing the load distribution significantly, right? So look at that, and then proceed with the flight test and then get the data. So the wind tunnel test is a costly affair again, and of course the flight test, right. So at each and every level you have an iterative approach here. So we may not be covering the entire part in this course, right. So the emphasis of this course is to concentrate, is to get a inverse solution. See here, we'll, any of these design algorithms will talk about aerofoil selection in the first place, right. So I would like to approach this in an inverse way, where I will take the mission requirements, right. So we will have the mission requirements and then we will use those mission requirements along with performance and stability analysis, right. We will we'll get aerofoil selection, geometry and other, all the geometric parameters say root chord, tip chord and the uh, reference area. So all these things as an output including what should be the CL alpha of the entire aircraft, what should be the CL naught of the air UAV, right? And also what should be the two dimensional CL naught and CL alpha, right? We'll, we'll get that as an output and we'll be concentrating only on lower subsonic speeds. So that particular algorithm will correspond to lower sus subsonic speeds. So what we'll be dealing, dealing with is, yeah, coming back to this. In order to get that as an output, we need to give certain inputs, right, uh, in terms of non-dimensional geometric parameters, okay. So what we have is a weight estimation and then, yeah, up to this it is similar. So, so weight estimation, in fact everything, so we'll have the same thing, flight conditions and constraints.
then. So uh, here in our previous uh, discussion, like in our previous algorithm, so this empirical relation can be replaced by CFD simulations. So similarly, the error dynamic parameters here, instead of using them, we can use the CFD simulations as an input. Okay. So, so what we have, what we'll be doing is we'll we'll consider the issues of stability. and also performance so we'll use this together right so for this stability criteria in order to uh, figure out this we need so we need some inputs in terms of aerodynamic design parameters. And we also require, so here we will also require some non dimensional. geometric parameters as an input. So, the output from this particular subroutine will be geometry airfoil data and also engine capabilities. See, again design is not, is, it will not, will, will not be able to achieve a straightforward, is a closed form solution for the design process, right. So, but here uh, with this particular al algorithm, we will try to achieve, right, with of course, with uh, all these uh, inputs in terms of aerodynamic design parameters as well as non dimensional geometric parameters. We will try to achieve these as a closed form solution from this algorithm. Okay. Right. So, basically, what you are going to have is the details that you will get is about the span, about the root chord, and tip chord. So, tail sizing. tail setting and location. So, wing characteristics in terms of CL naught, CL alpha right? and the airfoil characteristics in terms of two dimensional yeah properties C L naught and C L alpha. So, this will be the aim of the current lecture series, right. So, we will develop various subroutines in order to achieve these particular parameters. So, this particular analysis can be used as a initial or a preliminary design during the pre preliminary design analysis. When you add optimization techniques to this, that can be used for detailed design analysis, right. So, and again I would like to clear uh, certain misconceptions, you know, general misconceptions about this course. So, so this course is not aimed at uh, error modeling, right? we are not going to do any error modeling stuff in this particular course and moreover we are not going to talk about the structural and I am not an expert in that definitely, yeah, we are not going to talk about this structural design and analysis as well as aerodynamic design and optimization, right. And neither we are employing any of these optimization techniques here in order to uh, come up with an optimal design, 
So this, this can be used, as I mentioned, this particular algorithm that we are going to develop can be used for preliminary design analysis, right? So, and once you have hands-on experience with this, then of course, uh, optimization techniques and all these are mathematical tricks, which you can learn very easily, right? And apply those mathematical tricks or optimization techniques for this particular, uh, yeah, algorithm. So that you'll get optimized values of this parameters. So we have two TAs in our course this time. So fortunately, Prabhajit is on campus. So meet Mr. Prabhajit, yeah, you can take off your mask. So you can introduce yourself. Yeah, hello all, myself is Prabhajit Singh. So I am one of the, the TAs of this course, Training Administrating Assistant. And the other one is Kazi. Yeah, that's our second TA is Kazi Salahuddin, who was TA for uh, the first part of this course. And both the times when it was when it was offered, so he was the TA, main TA for that course. So both of them will be helping us. Uh, and yes, uh, we are talking about an iterative approach here. So we need to use uh, some of the pro uh, any one of the programming language. And I would prefer MATLAB as uh, uh, yeah, I would prefer uh, MATLAB here to program them. And I wish uh, you should start learning MATLAB. So for those who are not comfortable with that. Prabhajit and Kazi will uh, help you with some of the tutorials right, in MATLAB. Okay. Sure. Sounds good? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So, in the coming lectures, we will try to revisit some of the important concepts that we have already covered during our previous lecture series and will be useful for the current design process that we are going to take up. Right. Okay then. See you soon.